Hello, my name is Josue Vargas and I'm an integration engineer with Annex Log. In this video, we will discuss Kubernetes cluster log collection with Annex Log Enterprise Edition. Kubernetes is a container orchestration system for automating software deployment, scaling, and management. Kubernetes provides a single point of management, a set of administrative tools, and high availability features to the container based application ecosystem. Now, let's talk about the challenges for application administrators when it comes to logging. With great innovation come new challenges to solve. In the case of Kubernetes, its flexibility and failure recovery for applications inside pods also makes data inside a cluster highly volatile. Industry experts agree the practice of storing data requiring persistency inside the components of a Kubernetes cluster should be discouraged. A classic example of this type of data is data stored in databases. Databases should be placed outside the cluster for more optimal performance and lowering volatility. Another example of persistent data that needs an environment that is highly available and stable is logs. There are two types of logs here to differentiate between, and those are Kubernetes logs and application logs. Kubernetes logs are the status logs for operations, conditions, errors, and essential information pertinent to the functioning of the Kubernetes cluster and its components. These logs are not the focus of this presentation. Application logs, on the other hand, are logs produced by the applications residing in the Kubernetes pods and containers. Since for the most part, an application is mapped to a pod in Kubernetes and the pod has such a short volatile lifespan, safely gathering and forwarding these logs to persistent storage is of great concern for the administrators of these services. We will focus on these logs in the upcoming demo. Before we dive into configuration aspects on how Annex Log Enterprise Edition easily integrates into your Kubernetes ecosystem, let's take a moment to establish where the problem resides and how we will deal with it. Application logs, by default, reside in pods with volatile lifespans. These pods may be deleted at any time and their application log data with them. As a solution to this, Kubernetes logs standard output and standard error streams from applications to a folder at the node level using symbolic links, bar log pods, and bar log containers. However, nodes are also volatile and they may die and be quickly replaced by another node. This means logs will also be lost when the node fails. Here is where we plug in NX Log Enterprise Edition as a pod using a Kubernetes mode called daemon set. A daemon set ensures that a copy of a given pod is always run in every node with membership to the cluster. In this way, NX log will always run in spite of node failures. Finally, we want to ensure that those logs are not stored in the Kubernetes cluster as a final destination. So since we now have a highly available NX log enterprise edition pod, we will configure it to send the log data to a syslog listener residing outside of the cluster. All right, let's do this. I'm running a Kubernetes cluster on an Ubuntu VirtualBox VM using Minikube which provides an excellent lab environment, especially for proof of concept before deploying to production. I have two pods running MongoDB and Mongo Express, which is the web portal to manage MongoDB. Please note, not all applications log their messages to standard output and standard error. So you might want to take that into account while choosing what you're testing with. I will have more details on this after the demo. MongoDB and Mongo Express do. As you can see here, from the var log pods and var log containers in this node. Now let's enhance this setup by creating the NX log pod to take care of those logs and send them to safety. NX log enterprise edition is offered as a Docker image. So integrating it into your cluster is simple. Download the NX log enterprise edition Docker image using your NX log.co account and move it to a folder of your preference. Untar the file. First, I will decompress the Gunzip layer and then the tar compression layer. Before we build the container, let's make sure it has a configuration file with the parameters we want it to execute. In this case, we're using the IAM file module and pointing it to bar log pods wildcard, wildcard, wildcard.log, a symbolic link to the location where Kubernetes stores application logs. I'm using JSON formatting for the output module and sending the logs to a syslog server that's external to the Kubernetes cluster. This helps us have a more stable environment to store and access the collected logs. Build the NX log container using the command 
docker build dash t nx log period. This takes care of building the image to be used in the cluster. Now we need to ensure that nx log is always running in this cluster. In order to ensure this, we will deploy it as a daemon set. This means that the pod will be persistent across all nodes, ensuring that as long as there are available nodes, nxlog will continue its operation. To do this, we will create a YAML file with a series of manifests, which I will explain. This manifest creates a service account, which is required to run nxlog as a daemon set. Assuming a typical Kubernetes cluster is in place, several pods containing applications will require the services of nxlog. Hence, we need to provide the proper permissions for nxlog to be able to read, list, and watch pods and namespaces. We will define a role for this purpose, as you can see in the snippet. In the final manifest, we bind the services account we created with the role we define and its corresponding permissions. At this point, we have the nxlog image built with a proper configuration file and a service account that will help us deploy nxlog as a daemon set. But Kubernetes requires a deployment file that tells us how we want the pod operation to happen. There is a great template in the nxlog documentation we will use here to generate a proven configuration. I will explain it at a high level. The first part of the manifest defines tags, names for the pod, the kind of pod it is, and the namespace where it will live. It's important to note that nxlog is part of the cube system namespace. The toleration section provides the possibility of scheduling the nxlog pod in the master node if it has the ability of hosting pods. In this example, that toleration is key since Minikube is a compact single node deployment. Disable this if you don't want to schedule an nxlog pod to your master node. Next, you will see specific volumes that are allowed to be read by the pod in the host system, resource limits, and the environment variable that allows to use the node name in the outputted logs, among other settings. I will apply the deployment file, and as soon as I do that, you can see how the pod comes up. Now, the infrastructure setup for nxlog is in place, and it's resilient. Let's see the resulting output of the previous configuration in our syslog server file. There is a second nxlog implementation mode within Kubernetes, which is a sidecar configuration, as opposed to the daemon set configuration we just created. This is meant to capture logs which aren't sent to standard error or standard output by default. So a very custom container image that requires nxlog to look into particular locations which aren't shared with Kubernetes components would require a sidecar where both nxlog and the application in question share the same container. You can learn more about sidecar configuration in our guide. Kubernetes is here to stay. And no matter how complex the application ecosystem you host in this platform, NXLog Enterprise Edition is able to adapt to your needs and provide reliable, persistent, and highly available log collection to ensure you're always in control while you keep providing the services your users love. This concludes the presentation, Kubernetes Cluster Log Collection with NXLog Enterprise Edition. If you have any questions or would like to request a trial of NXLog Enterprise Edition, you can do so online by visiting nxlog.co slash request dash trial. By contacting our pre-sales team at presales at nxlog.org or by clicking on the trial link in the description below. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it was informational and enlightening and I hope you have a great day.